How we doing everyone? Welcome to another Toon Boom Harmony tutorial. My name is Frank Summers and this tutorial will be about eye blinks and how we can use the color override and cutter nodes to accomplish this. Uh, first I'd like to just say that I tried to find out the answer to this but I had trouble doing so. Uh, we need a color override node in order for this to, uh, to work and I'm not quite sure if Essentials has the uh, color override uh, so that said, if you can just hop into Harmony really quickly, it, I believe if you were to just hit the little plus symbol down here and you would see Color Override would appear in this list. Uh, I'm using Premium, um, so I have a node library. Um, I believe Color Override would be included in the advanced uh, version of Harmony, uh, as this is, after all, kind of an advanced way of creating an eye blink, uh, thus advanced. Uh, but if you do have Essentials, this may not be for you. Uh, that said, so here we are, we're in Harmony, we have our little character right here, uh, and I have a few frames of a blink going on that I had traditionally animated. Um, and as you can see, the, they close, and if I was just to click on them and move them around, it's just one piece of artwork in there. The, the, uh, the line work and the, the eye white is one layer, one piece of artwork, and we're going to use a combination, again, of the color override to pull out the white that is defining the eye and use that to create as a use that as a mask to cut the pupil because right now I do this the pupil is escaping the boundary of our eye so the first thing we can do is hop into our node library uh, generally under favorites we're going to need two the color override and we will need our cutter and the first thing we want to do is hook up the color override to the well let's just concentrate right now, right now on our left our left eye. I have these layers color coded so the pupils are blue so you can see them in my timeline and the eyes are orange and that's just for so we can see it more clearly. And we want to pull out the white of the eye. So we want to grab a copy of the left eye, stick that into the color override. For now we can use the cutter and we're going to cut using alt so we can insert it in there. Uh, we can pull another pipe out of our color override and stick that into the mat. And the eye has disappeared. That's because we haven't actually taken anything out of the eye yet. Right now it's using the entire eye as a whole to cut the pupil. Uh, so let's go into our color override. And this is where color management kind of comes into play. It's important to kind of name your uh, name your colors. Uh, I'm going to do a more in-depth tutorial on colors uh, probably within the next two weeks. Uh, but in the color override properties, we have our palettes that are listed in the scene. And I have one called Eye Blink. I called it that. That's just what I named it. And here's our colors associated with that. And if I look in here, there's a color called Eye White. I will click on it. I will go to this tab. Now, this gets a little, so please try to follow along. I'll go as slowly as possible. And I'll do this again for the other eye in case you get lost. Go to the Render Selected Colors Only and add the Eye White to it. Now, in this drop-down box right here, we want to hit... Render selected colors, not render all, not rendered selected colors and bitmaps, just render selected colors. Hit close. And now we still don't see the eye, or excuse me, the pupil, but that is because our cutter has to be set to inverse. Bink. Whoops, sorry, I hit it twice by accident. And there we have it. If I take the eye and move it around, as you can see, it is now being cut by the eye. I'm going to go through that again one more time for the sake of, here let's move these things around so they're a little clearer, for the sake of, uh, just so everyone can follow it, go into our library, pull in a cutter, and pull in a color override. We want to cut the pupil, so we insert the cutter into that. Let me make a little more space so it's a little clearer so everybody can see. We want to cut the pupil. And what are we cutting it with? We want to cut it with the white of the eye. So we grab a copy of the eye, plug it into there, plug that into our cutter, step into the color override. And again, there's tons of options in here. We're just focusing purely on pulling out just the white. Find, go to our rendered selected colors only tab, find the color, where is it? Eye white, add it. Render selected colors. That's telling the color override to only spit out the, in this case, the eye white. Hit close. And let's not forget to 
invert our mat and there we have it and there is our eye and if I was to step through the time our eyes are being cut or I should say pupils I should say so this is very easy to and this is kind of like a set it and forget it kind of thing so now that I have this set up it's pretty simple for me to generate new eyes in this fashion and they will always be cutting the pupil because it is as long as I'm using the eye white that same color in this case for me uh, and you can name this whatever you want uh, it will always be cutting your pupil there's one more thing I want to point out it's as simple as that but there's one more thing I'd like to point out I'm going to zoom in here really closely I'm going to step through you're going to see that the pupil is being cut slightly different than this one uh, and that is because what is happening is the color override is pulling out the white. This particular eye right here, if I was to pull up the, this is the stroke. I, I hope you can see it in the video. This is the stroke. This eye was drawn with a pencil. And as you can see, the white is going to the center line of our pencil. So if I was to say manipulate this, change it, it's going to do that. Make sense? This eye, before I began to record, I took the pencil and I broke it down into a brush stroke. So this type of thing is going on here. So what does that mean? The, eye, the color override is the white is only being pulled out. <laughs> the color override is pulling out the white that is being shown because of the brush stroke. If, if, uh, if this is making sense, the brush stroke is, does not have the center line like the pencil line does. So this is one of the, you know, this is kind of like you have to go back and forth between what is the better way of doing things. You could either go through and hit select all. I can go and convert pencil lines to brush strokes and flatten it. And there we have the same on both sides. Let me undo. Well, the next thing we could do, or well, the other thing we could do, if we wanted to keep the pencil line for whatever reason, if it's a part of our style or what have you, we could use the auto patch node to help smooth this out a little bit. If I go into filter, auto patch, pull that guy in there. Uh, things get a little tricky here. I need to, this is where things get a little more advanced, so stick with me. I'm going to go into my eye right. I'm going to go into the drawing tab of my eye right. My right eye, I should say. I'm going to grab the white of the eye. Here it is. I'm going to undo. Grab that white. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to step down to my sub layer, or excuse me, art layer. The color, I'm going to paste it. And now the, you can see that this line here is the backlight. It's just going to show me colored area, uh, things that are colored. The eye white is no longer inside of the eye. It's down here on the color art layer. That's kind of important for what I'm about to do. Because the auto patch node, I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to get rid of the color override for now. Goodbye, color override. I'm going to grab the auto patch. And I'm going to cut it with the auto patch. And we're getting basically the same results. Why is that? The, the auto patch, what the auto patch is doing, and again, the eye is still, uh, it's still a pencil line here. The auto patch is a very handy module, by the way. I can probably do a whole tutorial on that. The auto patch is looking for whatever is on the color uh, art layer. It's yanking that out, and it's using that, in this case, to cut. I am not using the color override to yank out the eye white. The auto patch is only looking for what is on the color sub art layer, or art layer. Sub. <laughs> I don't know why I call it sub layer so much. Uh, it, is, it is actually called an art layer. The auto patch is doing that. Uh, and what does that mean? You may say, hey, that's great. That's fantastic. I would, why would I want to go through the color override? And why don't I just use the auto patch? Well, I'm going to throw a twist at you. If I was to manipulate this line at all, That is because the white, the eye white is now on a separate layer. It's on a separate sub art layer. So there's another wrinkle. It's, it's, it's a give and take situation. Um, 
might be able to do a combination of both. Let's undo what we did here. Let's hook our color override back up. Let's see if this works. This may or may not work. It does not work. I didn't think it would. Yes, so the cut, the auto patch is it's either one or the other. You can't do both. So I just did a little experimentation there. So that's really it. It's up to you to kind of figure out what you need to do in your particular particular whatever the style is of your puppet is. If your puppet is pencils, maybe you might want to duplicate your eye. Go into our library, we can duplicate it. And we can even name it. We can go so far as naming it. We can call it uh, uh, converted, I guess. Convert. <laughs> Once it gets spelled wrong. Convert. Pencil lines to brush strokes. Flatten it. Oh, well, of course, the, the white is still in the sub art layer. So we can dip, ditch that. Color our eye white back in. And there you have it. It really is just kind of as simple as that. I mean, I know this got a little uh, goosey at the end when I threw in the extra auto patch uh, wrinkle into you. I just wanted to kind of throw an extra curveball at you. Uh, it's just yet one more way of kind of dealing with a very common problem. And in this case, an eye blink. I personally recommend using the color override. Uh, it just gives you a little, little bit more dynamic. Uh, you know, you can easily update the artwork. Um, whenever you need to uh, and it uh, it's always just going to look for the whatever colors are plugged into it at the time that said the color over this combination of a color override and color uh, it's pretty common you can you can make all kinds of great masks uh, simply by selecting different ranges of colors that are inside of your model and use them as different masks for all kinds of stuff like masking on an arm or if it's going in front of a body or a hand you know, the, 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 the possibilities kind of are almost endless in this particular case. Using it as an eye blink is just one way out of many, many ways of using the, 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 the dynamic duo of a color override and a cutter. I think that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you for joining me. You're going to see some links in front of you there. I do the Wednesday Lunch Live sketch every Wednesdays, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I do, what else do I do? I do these harmony tips. You can click that button there. It'll bring you to the first of the time of the timeline tips which is the beginning of the uh, playlist I suggest watching them all in order because I kind of build and I do random my animation every once in a while who knows when it pops up there you're also going to see some links there that are not really links I don't even know what <laughs> I'm, I'm having trouble getting my links to work but they're there see the, sub <clears throat> the description for links to my Twitter my Google Plus Tumblr and of course my good old blogger as I often do daily updates on those social platforms as well thanks for hanging with me today guys and take care